Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and we're going to be looking at a number of things that are going on. In fact, one uh, issue we're going to be touching on that I'll be doing on Patreon, it's going to be part of another uh, broadcast that I've been putting together for you. I've been talking about wanting to come out and share some things with you over on our Patreon channel. I've just been so wrapped up with so many things happening. I have not had a chance to stop and even put that together. But uh, uh, there is a new intelligence officer. Actually, the guy here, when I looked at one of his photos on here, uh, he's got the rank of uh, a colonel, actually, the United States Air Force colonel, uh, who served over in, uh, he's actually served in um, uh, Afghanistan and also has been, a, is now a whistleblower about uh uh, le uh, or information about downed uh, alien aircraft intact, including uh, uh, beings on those aircraft, etc., as well as uh, in pieces, things like that. He's come out and, and sharing that information. Very uh, well decorated uh, uh, soldier, and I think a very, in very informative information that he is sharing there. Going to be putting that over on Patreon, that uh, as well as with the, uh, I believe, the, the Uma Uma. Uh, space rock as it has been called the asteroid that passed by earth what was it last year year before last is on course to pass again in the not so distant future don't have any dates as far as when that will be but one of the things that caught scientists attention about this rock was that it increased speed as it left orbit uh, it has a very uh, peculiar type of movement pattern which has led some scientists to believe that it could actually be a spaceship, not just a rock floating past the Earth there. But even more odd is that it's coming back again. Going to be getting into that information, some other information I'm hoping to be able to release to you that I think you're going to find very fascinating. Uh, and I know many people that you sign up on Patreon looking forward to this information. Uh, one of those things that I had promised you, and I am going to get to it, and that is uh, some very interesting information about Iran and Israel, and which is going to be another part of our news broadcast this evening uh, as we get into Iran unveiling the hypersonic missiles uh, that they have. And, of course, Iran claiming that they have developed this, I don't believe it. I believe they got the technology from China or Russia. And, of course, we're going to find out that the U.S. has done sanction against groups from not only Iran, but China, Hong Kong, tied to the Iran ballistic missile program. Uh, I'd actually, I'd, I actually shared that information uh, just recently. I believe it was over on John Moore's uh, program there uh, that we do there on... Um, Oh gosh, forget the name of the, the platform that's on there, but John Moore does his program. Many of you that may already know that. Uh, and I actually had already shared that and hadn't even, they hadn't even come out with the news as of yet when I shared that earlier this morning. So I uh, thought that was interesting too. Let's get right into the, I want to go right here to Tucker Carlson. Uh, he is going to be talking about the dam that was attacked. And, uh, and of course, the U.S. blaming Russia for doing it. Ukraine blaming Russia for doing it. And, you know, Tucker Carlson taking the side that no, Russia wouldn't be doing that to themselves, but rather it could be Ukraine doing it. Now, the danger is, is a meltdown of the uh, of the actual, hang on one second, I'm trying to find that there, would be the meltdown of the nuclear power plant as a result of this dam being struck. And one thing that I have heard and I've shared with you guys from Intel reports for a long time now is that one thing that could come to play is the meltdown of the nuclear power plant if uh, Russia saw that they were going to be losing the war. But see, the problem is Russia is not losing the war. And oddly enough, Russia, back on May 7th, was doing a major uh, evacuation of the people and troops in that area. Putin freaked out. He did an evacuation of that power plant because of the fear, and not just the, the plant. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of fear of sabotage that could happen, and uh, they were also uh, uh, removing the people out from that work at the power plant, getting them out of harm's way as well. And because we know the front lines are right in that area there, so could it be then that in fact Ukraine is the one that has actually bombed that facility? Uh, the the dam there that would inadvertently, which destroys the hydro plant, and the hydro plant is connected to the nuclear power plant, 
so that the nuclear, nuclear power plant cannot come down properly and would create a massive meltdown. So with that in mind and seeing that Putin has already did the evacuation back on the 7th, I believe that he had intel. He knew that something dangerous was coming. Therefore, he has taken actions on that and, uh, and trying to uh, avert uh, a catastrophe from happening and so many lives being lost there. And, uh, and oddly enough, though, no one else seems to be taking that, that, uh, that situation very serious. Let's listen to what Tucker Carlson had to say, a little bit about his comments on this issue here. Listen in. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. This morning, it looks like somebody blew up the Kokovka Dam in southern Ukraine. The rushing wall of water wiped out entire villages, destroyed a critical hydropower plant, and as of tonight, puts the largest nuclear reactor in Europe in danger of melting down. So if this was intentional, it was not a military tactic. It was an act of terrorism. The question is, who did it? Well, let's see. The Kokovka Dam was effectively Russian. It was built by the Russian government. It currently sits in Russian-controlled territory. The dam's reservoir supplies water to Crimea, which has been, for the last 240 years, home of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Blowing up the dam may be bad for Ukraine, but it hurts Russia more. And for precisely that reason, the Ukrainian government has considered destroying it. In December, the Washington Post quoted a Ukrainian general saying his men had fired American-made rockets at the dam's floodgate as a test strike. So really, once the facts start coming in, it becomes much less of a mystery what might have happened to the dam. Any fair person would conclude that the Ukrainians probably blew it up, just as you would assume they blew up Nord Stream, the Russian natural gas pipeline, last fall. And in fact, the Ukrainians did do that, as we now know. It's not I'll include this in the description below for you where Tucker call, talks about this. And he also, he did an, um, an amazing job on the Nord Stream pipeline there when he proved uh, without a doubt, with Biden's own words, that uh, the Nord Stream 2 would not exist uh, under certain conditions. If Russia did this, we would do that. Uh, so, uh, in fact, that video was scrubbed off of line that Tucker did, and we ended up putting it over on iConnect, translated it in multiple languages to make sure not only did Tucker's uh, video go back up uh, before the public, but made sure in about five different languages it could also be heard as well. So we appreciate Tucker on this, appreciate him weighing in on this issue here again, and also providing the evidence, as he did before uh, on Nord Stream there, that indeed... Uh, it appears to be that Ukraine is the one doing that. And we're bringing in the information that we had already shared with you a little while back, how that Russia knew that they would have to take and they would have to uh, uh, evacuate in the event this were going to happen. And and granted, we were already hearing that, you know, small, small uh, 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 lobbing bombs were going back and forth towards that uh, nuclear power plant. But see, Russia knows too that the U.S., uh, NATO, their allies have given Ukraine some very powerful weapons now that easily, if they were to strike at one of these nuclear power plants and blame it on Russia, that it would be it would be a major catastrophe for that region. So Putin taking that into consideration. And listen, when I say Putin, I'm not here to take up for Putin by no means, because like I've already said to you, they're definitely headed towards a new world order, a one world government. And that is without a doubt what is going to happen there while we're all sitting here uh, doing the anti-Russian thing and some people actually doing the pro-Russian thing. Uh, it's not one is better than the other. It's whoever comes out on top is going to bring about a new world order. It doesn't matter which way it ends up coming, coming down. Now, Yahoo News reporting that Iran avails a hypersonic missile hailing the deterrent boost there. Uh, and, you know, Iran acting like oh, they were able to develop this on their own. I said this, like I said this morning, over on John Moore's show there, uh, uh, the, the, the round table that we have uh, with Dave Hodges, as well as uh, uh, also um, one other guest he has, in my, my, my mind is slipping on names right now, I apologize for that. But uh, I brought that out that no, they didn't do it by themselves. Uh, they definitely had help. And I said either China or Russia was helping them. Then we have WTOP News putting out this story here, U.S. sanctions group of people and firms from Iran, China, Hong Kong, tied to Iran ballistic program. The U.S. said Tuesday it's sanctioning a group of people 
and firms from Iran, China, and Hong Kong associated with the alleged development of Iran's ballistic missile program. The network of seven people and six firms facilitated procurement of sensitive and critical parts and technology for key actors in Iran's ballistic missile development, including Iran's defense ministry and its affiliated firms, according to the Treasury Department. Uh, now, with that all being said there, keep in mind, Iran may have this new technology at their disposal, but again, Iran is only going to be using this for defensive measure. I do believe that after uh, uh, speaking to this one friend of mine there that has a lot of knowledge about what goes on in Iran, he said the people of Iran will cheer when U.S. or Israel together come against Iran to bring down this government. Uh, and I can see, after listening to him, I can see where that would be. They are furious with the government. Uh, even the people that used to support the government are furious with the government. So I've got some extensive notes there where we have, uh, my voice you'll hear on that video when I put that together there. But uh, the, the, uh, the information you'll be listening to is in an AI voice because of the way we've had to do this, uh, this particular information. But again, I think you're really going to appreciate uh, listening to some of this information there so that it, that you can get better uh, better equipped on what actually took place there. Also, too, this right here, Africa has joined uh, uh, forces with Russia and recently made a deal to build uh, a nuclear power plant in Egypt. New World Order is about to be surrounded. Huh. Well, again, different idea on New World Order. I want to play this, though, this clip here, very, very powerful. And uh, I think you need to hear this there, uh, this this African leader here, as he tells you who the real thugs are in the world. Listen up, and it's so true. Putin is welcomed here, and no one is going to arrest Putin. If needs be, we'll go and fetch Putin from the airport to his meeting. He will address, finish all his meetings, we'll take him back to the airport. We're not going to be told by these hypocrites of the International Criminal Court who know the real violators of human rights, who know the murderers of this world. That former uh, premier, uh, uh, prime minister of uh, Tony Blair admitted that they made a horrible mistake when it comes to Saddam Hussein. They have not been charged today. Bush is still there. They have not been charged till to date. And then Obama killed Gaddafi. And then nothing has happened. We are here today with Libya being destroyed and unable to recover because of America. We know very well that where NATO gets involved, those are terrorists. We know very well where the U.S. says we are going in to uh, install peace. That place will never know peace as long as America has visited that place. So we don't want uh, ICC's hypocrisy to apply here in our country. Putin is welcomed here. God bless that man there for making that stand there. I really appreciated that. Uh, very interesting, his, his words, his comments here. So true. And uh, a lot of people may not want to admit it, but very, very, very true. I want to play this right here for you as well. Uh, this is a minister, uh, street, street preacher. He is going to be arrested. And he's not even screaming or shouting. Going to be arrested uh, because of a, uh, his uh, adversity towards a, uh, a PA Pride event. So listening to this, I thought it was interesting uh, and, and sad to say that Freedom of speech is one-sided in this nation. And I've seen this before, but I wanted to bring it to your attention this time around. Listen in. To support us, this cop's going to give him a hard time. Oh, I'm respecting. You know who's cheering for is the people that are in hell. So you do you, and I'm going to do me. This is public property. You. God is not. That's what this one. He don't even get it out of his mouth. He just says God, and he's arrested. 
That that is an overzealous policeman, and and really is sad because uh, you know the people. Are, I, you know, look, they all should have their right to have freedom of speech, and each person, regardless of their view, should have their right to have freedom of speech. And if they're not, if they're not bringing any violence or anything, just speaking their opinions. Why can't he have his freedom of speech as well? And and we've seen this more than once uh, already. I've seen the second time I've actually seen this. So really sad, really sad to say. So you know, no freedom of speech, and uh, yet the people that that cheer on that he got arrested, they they appreciate the fact they got freedom of speech. What do they don't want their freedom either, or is it just going to be one sided? It was really sad, really sad, uh, which another event, too. I saw this one right here, uh, and this mayor, boy, was he ever angry, too, boy, at this town hall meeting. Uh, I'll play just a little clip of this here, too. Uh, here from and the public. Now, keep in mind, I do not know the speaker. I do not know what he stands for. But uh, the mayor, though, because it was obviously... Uh, he was pointing out some facts that he was very uncomfortable with, being that uh, he is Jewish. Uh, but yet again, he did not want this man to get his freedom of speech either. However, those on the panel there made sure he did get the full uh, three minutes that he was entitled to. Uh, and he is the mayor of Sacramento, Mayor Steinberg. But uh, we'll listen just a little bit of what he says there. And the guy that actually is speaking is uh, uh, very, very... Um, He's cautious in the way he presents his material, but listen in. Let's uh, hear from the public and then we'll open it up to members of the council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I have 25 speakers. The first is Ryan Masano. That government governs least, or governs best, which governs least. It is irrational to believe that raising taxes and throwing more money at the problems of crime, homelessness, and a dysfunctional education system will fix those problems. No society in human history ever taxed its way to prosperity. Of course, 1913 was the worst year in American history as we were enslaved with the income tax, direct election of senators, and the Federal Reserve. And if you say who runs the Federal Reserve, you are anti-Semitic, a word which along with Nazi and racist was created by these bankers to protect them from criticism. They cry out in pain as they strike you. Police generally do a good job, though, as happened in Russia in 1917 and China in 1948 with their communist revolutions, the media inflamed popular hatred of police so that police would be helpless when communist mobs began murdering the enemies of the bankers. And you are an anti-Semite if you say who they are. Until union control of police and all other professions is ended, they will not be truly accountable to the people they serve. Unions profess to give fair wages and benefits, but in reality, it is about absolute control from the top of the unions. If white supremacists hate bigotry, bigotry, sexism, and racism from whites was a problem in Sacramento, then why isn't the entire Sacramento City Council made up of straight whites? So we see you are deceiving when you <laughs> The black guy, I think that's why they keep putting the arrow there. He's responding very appropriately. And uh, I'll, I'll, again, I'll just leave the link here for you to listen to the rest of it there. The, the man is, though, he's very cautious about the way he words things there. Uh, because he doesn't want to be labeled as anti-Semitic. Um, but uh, Mayor Steinberg, though, really, really got bent out of shape. And instead of allowing the man to speak uh, because he's not crossing those lines, he should have allowed him to finish his speech. Uh, he still got to finish it anyway because the council did put the 30 seconds back up on the clock uh, for him where he was trying to cut him off. Um, but... That is where our, our, uh, the, the problem in, the, in America is coming to, though. The freedom of speech is definitely being suppressed. And I think it's only a matter of time before even independent media here on the Internet is going to be suppressed as well. That's coming. It's definitely coming. Um, you know, and, and to make such statements like what he's doing there. Uh, in fact, if he did it in Florida, he'd probably end up in jail, uh, quite frankly. Uh, that's just how strict uh, DeSantis has become with his laws. And, of course, going to Israel to pass those laws, to, I guess, to make more of a political statement. But, uh, in fact, the fact that they're signed in Israel should make them invalid and illegal in the United States. 
Uh, that's my opinion on that. I can't say that it's right or not, but I think that should be the way it, it is. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. Uh, please uh, don't forget to support the broadcast there and uh, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can go right there. You can and, and watch those things. And keep in mind as well, um, uh, besides our uh, donate link there, you can donate online, but uh, also to uh, EMP Shield. Uh, we are faced more and more and more with a real threat of an EMP strike or any other type of disaster that would be very, very important for you to be able to save. Uh, they've, it looks like they've just extended the Memorial Day sale for 24 more hours. I don't know if that is uh, if that is still on as of right now, but they're giving you that 10% on your entire cart, uh, as well as when you use the INL50 code. Uh, and just to kind of help you to know about that there, let's just hit home protection if you were to get one for your home. And you add that to your cart there. You add it to the cart. Once you go to the cart there, every time you add a, a, an EMP shield to that cart there, it asks for a, a coupon code, INL50, which is Israeli News Live, the INL. You apply that. They're going to give you a $50 off plus a 10% discount. In a case like $400, that'd be a total of $90 off. Uh, with that sale there. So let's just, we're going to go ahead and proceed to check out just out of curiosity. I, I think that's how that's going to work there. And uh, let me just see if we're getting, yeah, here we go. We, got the, we also got the Memorial Day sale there, $34.90 off as well. Uh, they're actually taking it off after your coupon code. So it's $34.90. Still though, it's a $84 savings there. So listen, why you can get it cheaper definitely if you've been holding out to get one definitely get your EMP shield I think it's a great idea great investment great insurance policy if you ask me um, and uh, especially some of the strange lightning strikes we've been having around our own property there unusually powerful lightning strikes anyway uh, I'm Stephen Benoon you're watching Israeli News Live thank you for listening and good evening